Good evening. Let us begin our Panchama Veda by reciting this mantra. Tabukatham Ritam Tapta Jeevanam Kobibhiriritam Kalma Shapaham Sravana Mangalam Sri Madatatam Bhubi Grinanti E Bhuri Dajana In the last class, we were, we just began to discuss about this one. Sri Ramakrishna with the devotees at Dakshinesha. This is the part two. The part one we have already studied, read, and this is the part two. It was Sunday, it was December 9, 1883. I am reading from the 330 pages of the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna. Then Sri Ramakrishna was describing the condition of Mahaprabhu Sri Chaitanya. The Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, how he is to behave in his spiritual moods. To say that he said, Master, he said, Chaitanya experienced three states of mind. Mind is having three stages, states of mind. First, the conscious state when his mind dwelt on the gross and the subtle. Second, the semi-conscious state, when his mind entered the causal body and was absorbed in the bliss of divine intoxication. Third, inmost state, the highest state, when his mind was merged in the great cause. Now, here he says it is the mind. So, when we talk about the God realization, when we talk about the spiritual experiences, where it is coming to our mind, not on the body, not on anything, on the mind. So, the mind is the main instrument. Again, the Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, with this mind, you cannot realize God. You need a purified mind, a mind which is completely pure. Same mind, when attached with all these worldly things, so in the first stage, Sri Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, his mind is dwelt on the gross and the subtle. The gross body means as in the Vedanta, we always, and in the Bhagavad Gita, it gives in a beautiful way, Mahabhuta, Ahamkara, Buddhi, Abhyaktamevacha, Indriyani, Dashai Kancha, Pancha Chindriya Gochara. These are total, is the Mahabhuta. These are the gross. Mahabhuta, the five. Then Stula Vishay, again five. Indriya, ten. Mon Buddhi Chitta Ankar, four. Twenty-four Tattva. So these are the twenty-four Tattvas, truths, by which this whole this world, we say, can universe, each and everything is made up. So this is called the gross. When our mind goes out, each and every one of us is experiencing this. This is the experience of each and every one. Now, to withdraw the mind from this and going to the subtle, and then to the subtlest, and then to the cause. These are the stages. Withdrawing the mind, why should I have to withdraw? This is the question. In a normal way, my mind is going out and we can see all these things. We can see, we can taste, we can hear, we can touch, all these things we can do, we can enjoy, and sometimes we suffer. So these things are going on, suffering and enjoyment. So why should I have to withdraw the mind from these? Because these are all temporary. 
In the Panchadashi again, the Vidyaranya Muni, someday we'll be studying that Panchadashi, the serious Vedanta study. So Vidyaranya Muni, he is telling that slowly, slowly we have to give up. What, how to, how to analyze from the gross to subtle, subtle to subtle, subtle to the cause we have to go. That, these are the steps of the Vedanta. So this way when we reach, Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna is giving the description of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu who was dwelling, his mind was dwelling on that. Ordinary mind, our mind, always on the gross level. So we always feel like this, it is filled with that. And from the young stage, when, the young, when we are young, if we start withdrawing our mind, it is easy. Because we, it has not been colored, or you can say contaminated, by all these different things. So Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he first, first mind is going, dwelt on the gross and the subtle. And what is the subtle? The last time also, in the Atma Bodha, Shankaracharya is mentioning about the subtle, Pancha Prana, Mano Buddhi, Aprunchikrita Bhuta. These are called Sukshmangam, Sukshma Anga, subtle body. So one is gross body, behind this is the subtle body, and then again at the back of that is the causal body. That is the main cause. We have to go back to the that one, and for that we have to give up these words. Nama and Rupa. This Nama Rupa, the world of this Nama Rupa, when we can give it. Nama means name, Rupa means form. Everything in this universe is nothing but the combination of these two. It has a name, it has a form. And as because it is all changing, so it is not permanent. Our goal is to reach to the permanent. So we are withdrawing and going back, going back, going back. That is the when we next stage we go, that's called subtle. And from the subtle when we go, he says that from the second semi-conscious state when his mind entered into the causal body, absorbed in the bliss of divine intoxication. When it is going to the causal body, and the bliss of why one, there is no two. So obviously mind is full with that. And that one is full of joy. And that full of joy, sometimes people say consciousness, sometimes say God, sometimes say Brahman. In different way, they try to express those who have experienced it. So obviously, you have to go back to that and that is the goal. And then when the mind was merged in the great cause, that is the last stage. The last stage is that, and to experience this, Swami, Sri Ramakrishna is telling, this agrees very well with the five koshas, pancha kosha, vilakshana, atma. If you study Vedanta, that is the first step. Pancha kosha, vilakshana, atma. Friends, this is not actually the way we understand religion. The religion has two different way of expression. One, the external way, it is rituals and uh, other things, which almost all of us can understand and we can practice. Second, it goes to philosophy. So obviously when the philosophy, it becomes very subtle, it's only the thinking. Why I am doing this? The answer of that why. So here it says, it agrees very well with the koshas, pancha kosha. We simply say body and mind. But Vedanta will say no. How? Because they have experienced it. They have analyzed it. And more gross to subtle, that is the analysis. That's the system of analysis. The Panchakosha, there is Annamaya, Manomaya, it goes in this way, Sri Ramakrishna is explain, explaining. The Annamaya and the Pranamaya, 
that goes. The gross body corresponds to the Annamaya and the Pranamaya. And these are the two. This is called gross body. Subtle body, Monomaya and Vijnanamaya. The mind, the body, uh, the whole world is nothing but the mind. And Vijnanamaya, the knowledge. And then finally it goes to the causal body, Anandamaya Kosha. We always think that if we reach to that, that is great. That is not the final stage. Sometimes when the people, they are climbing the Everest, Mount Everest, they can go up to the just below step, the last step above, uh, below the summit. Last step below the summit. But that is the most difficult part. Why? Because there is so much of joy, mind don't want to work. I am fine over here. Why should I? I am not going down. Everything is one. He starts enjoying that condition and don't like to strive further. And then it goes beyond and merges with the great cause. Because up to that, is also the third stage also it says the third innermost stage when the mind was merged in the great cause below that pancha kosha there's also the sit there's also the cover there's also temporary so that is why sri ramakrishna is telling it is the causal body was absorbed in the bliss of divine intoxication but that is all that is also not the top so can you imagine, if we make a pyramid like this, we can understand the 24 tattas at the back, that is on the base, then it goes, then it goes, then it goes, and the top is so subtle. To reach over there and to make yourself established over there is really good, difficult, most difficult. So Jesus said, blessed are those who are pure in heart, for they shall see God. He is not talking that only a few will see. Anyone can see, but the mind should be pure. And what is the condition of the purity? He is completely free from all these worldly things, purity. And how to get out of these connections of these worldly things? unselfishness. Not that you have to go and lock yourself in a corner of the room or in a secluded place hiding yourself. That is the mostly the people think in that way. But Sri Ramakrishna completely broke it. And he said why? If you can see God by closing your eyes, can't you see God by opening your eyes? So that is the speciality of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna. And most of the people you will see the so that our holy people, if you see the pictures, all with closed eyes, with a rosary in hand, with the closed eyes. Most of our grandfather's pictures are like that. And also the holy people closing their eyes. Why? We have to go inside. Sri Ramakrishna is asking in the opposite way. Why? Whatever you see is nothing but the same God. Can't you see God with open eyes? There is nothing else except God. So the wonderful condition. Why should I have to be afraid of so many other things? I am turning my face this side. I see, oh my God, this is here. So again, I am turning my face. Oh my God, this is here. And where he will... Then you turn to the sky. There are also so many things are flying. It is so impossible to turn your face, close your eyes. So if you can only see each and everything that the manifestation of the same God, it is completely over. So finally the great cause has manifested in this way. And when we go back easily to that great cause, what remains? No one can say. When we see, say, when people are telling after experience that this is the joy, complete joy, full of joy, that is a different stage. That is even not the final. And when the final stage, 
Sri Ramakrishna is telling that you have to go, the, when Chaitanya's mind merged in that, T is capital, that, he would go into Samadhi. This is called Nirvikalpa of the Jada Samadhi. Jada and Chaitan, Jada means inert, just like the stone. The Jada Samadhi, Samadhi means the last of the yoga. So the terminology used of the yoga terminology, so that's Samadhi. And Nirvikalpa, we have again and again discussed about that. Kalpa means some object by which we reach over there and ni means negative, there is no object. Then what? Original. And what is that original? Then they say, I'm sorry, we cannot express it. You have to experience it yourself, the subjective knowledge. Here in the, we, we find that in the Panchadashi is a very famous book, Sambhid Eko Rupa Na Vidyate. Sambhid, they say call it Sambhid. Now some say Atma, some say Brahman, some like that. In the Panchadashi, that uh, Swami Vidyaranna, he said, Sambhid, the Chetana, the consciousness. Our, that, uh, our Sarada mission, the women wing of the Ramakrishna mission, not wing actually, they are completely separate, but they publish one magazine every month, Sambhid. Then consciousness, this sambhid, eko rupa, that is only one. Na vidyate, you cannot break it. In the Bhagavad Gita we find about the Atman, it says you cannot cut it, you cannot burn it, you cannot wet it, you cannot dry it. The same Atman is called sambhid. Eko rupa na vidyate, that is on the first chapter, fourth sloka of the Panchadashi. And again in the 42 sloka of the Panchadashi, it describes how you go. This was the unique way. They say there's a, the Munja Grasa. Grasa is that only the grass we know, that Grasa, uh, please come over here. Come to this side. Come. Please sit. This muncha grasa, that is the way we are discussing about how to reach to the Atma according to the Panchadashi. We are reading the Gospel of Sri Ramakrishna, this is only taking the help of the Panchadashi. And sambhid eko rupa na vidyate. The consciousness is one, you cannot break it. But how to reach to that oneness? Then it says, if you are going on, as the internal pith of the munja grass can be separated from outer covering, one after another, going on taking out the seeds of the grass. Ultimately, it's the, so the self can be distinguished from the three bodies, the gross, subtle, and the cause. There's also self, when you are discussing about that, only the three bodies. And then also we can say the Panchakosha, that is also, but here it says, then the self alone emer emerged as the Supreme Brahman. The self alone emerged as Supreme Brahman. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna has given the same description in a, another way. He says, if you go on opening an onion, if you are just cover, opening that outer cover, outer cover, outer cover, finally what you see, you can just, end, onions are available in every household. Just go on practicing that, you see what is there? What is there? Some will say nothing. No, that is everything. Because that is the, the moment you open the cover, what remains? everything. That is called Brahman and we have to reach to that and Sri Ramakrishna, he is going on giving the 
description of the Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, while conscious of the outer world, Chaitanya sang, sang the name of God. And while in the state of partial consciousness, he danced with the devotees. And while in the inmost state of consciousness, he remained absorbed in Samadhi. So these three stages. The first, you can sing, you can talk. At second stage, joy is so much, you cannot talk. The only thing that you can do, you can dance. When the Shiva, in great joy, he is dancing. So dance is the expression of the great joy. And only in a physical way that we are trying to express. And finally, everything stops in the samadhi. So this is the ultimate joy cannot be expressed through body or mind or words. So it is samadhi. The then Sri Ramakrishna aimed to himself. Is master hitting at the different states of his own mind? There is much similarity between Chaitanya and the master. Sri Ma, the master Masha, he is observing Sri Ramakrishna for the last two, three years. And when Sri Ramakrishna is giving the example of Chaitanya Mahaprabhu, he is thinking it's the same thing I see in him too. Then Sri Ramakrishna is telling, Chaitanya was divine love incarnate. Love incarnate. That is the incarnation, but completely love. And that, that is the reason it was very difficult for him to express. Most of the time, he used to sing and dance and used to forget the external world. He came down to earth to teach people how to love God. So we, we, we know how, what is love. We have love for so many other things. But when we love God, what happens to us? Hinduism is a great religion. And it gives the way out to each and every one to reach to that. If you like to go through philosophy, you have the path. If you like to go through work, if you like to go through devotion and meditation, all. Here, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is taking up the people's mind to that through love. And how to love? Forget even your body. We have seen the love of the mothers. Only last Sunday it was the Mother's Day. and. We have seen the mothers, the last bit of food also she will distribute. And then she will drink a glass of water in such a way as if she is also satisfied and she will go and sleep. The children won't understand that the mother is sleeping without food. They are hungry, they are asking food and she is all going on giving. When they are grown up, if they observe, then only they can see that how the mothers are sacrificing so much. So that is the because of the love. That same mother cannot do it for others just because I love my children. So out of that love, all these physical discomforts also she is bearing. Chaitanya Mahaprabhu came to teach the love, how to love God, even the forgetting the body there is no need of Hatha Yoga, he is mentioning. Suddenly, he is mentioning about the Hatha Yoga. A devotee is asking, Sir, what is this Hatha Yoga like? Now, it is very clear, the Vedantin and the people who want to have the spiritual experience, Hatha Yoga is not necessary. It is only keep the body a little uh, fit. So, that he says, a man practicing Hatha Yoga dwells a great deal on his body. He washes his intestine by means of the bamboo tube through his, or that this all a description he is giving. And he says that the Vedantin do not accept Hatha Yoga. There is also Raja Yoga. The Raja Yoga describes how to achieve union with God through the mind by means of discrimination and bhakti. So this is called Raja Yoga. Swami Vivekananda Patanjal Yoga Darshan, he has analyzed that 
and then he has given the name Raja Yoga. Raja means the highest, the greatest. So Raja Yoga by means of discrimination and bhakti, both things are necessary for the Raja Yoga. Only closing the eyes on do, only practicing the Ashtanga Yamarg and for Asana, Pranayama, Pratahara, this is okay. But discrimination, Bichara, why should I do it? Most of the time when the people, they come and ask, Swamiji, can you teach meditation? I say, what is the purpose? What do you want to do? So that is the first thing that you have to finalize it. Then only you can start, otherwise not. The first thing of the Hatha Yoga, discrimination. Why do I need the discrimination? And what is that discrimination actually? Discrimination between the temporary and the permanent. The God is only permanent. Each and everything including my body and the sun, each and everything is nothing but temporary. Because it's changing, we can observe, everything is changing. The sun is also changing, my body is also changing, mind is changing. So anything that is changing cannot be the permanent. So obviously my goal is to reach to the permanent and how to do that? It says discrimination. That, that begins the great that book. I mean bichara means between the temporary and the permanent. One is only permanent. Sometimes people call it God. Our Vedantin call it Brahman. Yogis call it Atman. So that that is the Vichara, that consciousness. And it says, at the same time, Bhakti is the devotion. The devotion to God. Only if you are having that capacity to analyze and moving towards the consciousness, that is Jnana Marga. Bhakti, the devotion, they are also having the discrimination, they are also having the concentration, they are also having the karma, that is also, so all the four paths, having all these four, but thrust is given on that particular path. Here it says, discrimination and bhakti. Now, this weekend we will be going to Ganges and we will have a retreat on Naradiya Bhakti. So one gentleman was describing Narada as a reporter. So people can understand Narada is roaming everywhere and collecting the information and give, but he was a great devotee. And his way he has described, there are many others, Parashara, others were there, but Narada says he's in a wonderful way and Siddhama Krishna, he is telling that is the real prescription for the modern day people. What is that? Tad arpita akhila acharata. Tad vishmarani paramo vayakulata iti. This is the Naradiya Bhakti. Tad arpita, ta da. It's not he or she. It is not Shiva or Shakti. It is only the consciousness. It is only the Brahman. It is only the self or the Atman. Arpita offering akhila acharata. Each and every action that we are doing, offering to him. I am doing, but that I is completely absent. Doing for you, so that is called completely giving to him. And then afterwards, paramo bakulata love. So the bichara and bhakti. And that's what Sri Ramakrishna is telling, discrimination and bhakti. This yoga is good. Hatha yoga is not good. And life of a man in the Kali yoga is dependent on food. Food means all these things that is dependent. Naturally, these are the two things we must have. The Ramakrishna, then the description our Master Masha is giving each and every place wherever he was present, not that all the days, all the moments, all the moments. When this master, the teacher, he was present in Dakshinesha, he has noted, Ramakrishna was standing in the road by the side of the Nahabad. Nahabad means a small place where in the beginning that was meant actually that 
small uh, double storied building meant for the musicians early in the morning or the in evening and sometimes they used to play the music so that people coming to visit the temple they, they used to have the nice music just to enjoy that then afterwards it was converted into uh, a place a residential place where Sri Ramakrishna's own mother used to live and Ma Saradamani Devi so they used to live over there. This is called Nahavat. And he was standing by the side. He was on his way to his room. He saw the, that Sri Ma sitting on the, uh, somewhere and meditating. Hello, you are here? And then immediately he said, you will get results very soon. If you practice a little, then someone will come forward to help you. So this is the assessment of Sri Ramakrishna because he could see the mind. So whenever someone came to him, sometimes he used to say, he is a good person but doesn't belong to this. That means this ideology. And Sri Ramakrishna's ideology is manifested in this way. He is a good person. He is also progressing but not to this. And said, but you, that master who is noting down, that to him he said, you will realize God very quickly because you have advanced a lot. Aim, the master Mahashaya, looked up at the master's turtle. He remained sitting on the floor. Because when the Sri Ramakrishna suddenly appeared before him and said, you are almost reaching to the goal, the, naturally the great joy, Sri Ramakrishna, time is ripe for you. Look at it. If someone came to tell us, then what is the joy? The time is ripe for you. The mother bird does not break the shell of the egg until the right time arrives. What I told you is needed your idea. That what I told you is indeed your, I'm sorry, indeed your idea. And that Master Moshe didn't disclose. The idea and that is called my and the god or goddess or some uh, the philosophical idea and that is given to someone and that is your ideal and you should develop your life in that way and that is called mantra diksha my there are so many gods and goddesses are there for the hindus and of them the guru said this is your ideal then Sri Ramakrishna is reminding him, what I told you is indeed your ideal. Sri Ramakrishna again mentioned to him his spiritual ideal. The spiritual ideal is again repeating to me. Today I gave the caption, the spiritual ideal. Different people, they are coming, their ideals are different. And that is the uniqueness of Sri Ramakrishna. Some are very active. They are not selfish people. Unselfishly they are working. Going to the fields and helping the people and arranging so many things. Very active people. Hardly they will sit for meditation. They will come, they will bow down to God and they will take little na name of God. But they go on repeating the name of God all the time. 24 hours. Some people, they are Jnana Margi. They'll be discriminating. If you go to Belurmat, I have seen the Swamis. Some are really very working and all people appreciate them only. They're working. But there are some. They won't work that way. Whatever you ask them to do, they will do. But most of the time, they're discriminating. They're reading books. They're discriminating. Their idol is there. Like if you read the, the great master and the history, of the Ramakrishna mission when it was growing up. The one Swami was there and afterwards he became Swami Avedananda. He had the habit of reading books. He could read really the Sanskrit and his understanding. He used to do that and his love was in that. But an organization means so many other Swamis are there. Someone should cook, someone should clean, someone should do this, someone should do that. To that way, it was organized. And his duty was to 
clean the vessels after the cooking and eating and all that he was supposed to. And every time he used to say, I will do it afterwards. And he used to go and he used to sit and read. That was not accepted by others. When the leader came, Narendranath, he was their leader, all of the same age almost. And they complained against him. And he said, Kali is sitting inside the room and not coming out. And who will do his duty? Then immediately Narendranath, Swami Vivekananda, he said, as Sri Ramakrishna announced that he is the leader, everyone accepted him. Then immediately he said, I will do that. Allow him to study. That is for him. Don't disturb him. Kali Prashanda, again, afterwards, Swami Avedananda, he was a great scholar. And all the sannyasa mantra, etc., etc., that he collected and he gave. Wonderful. Then afterwards, Karma Yoga also, when he came over here, he used to give the wonderful lectures, writing books, researching, all that way he manifested. But the physical labor he could not do, many others they did. So that all that was there, so they always, the senior Swamis, they say, Ramakrishna mission means is a bouquet of flowers, different type of flowers are there. Maybe very good flower, and maybe a very ordinary flower. But that is the beauty. And sometimes leaves are also there. So all together, that is the bouquet. So this is the beauty to so many varieties of people are there, but they are going to the same goal because of the idea. So that is the idea, the Sri Ramakrishna idea. Some is working, some is meditating, some is discriminating, some is devoted, but at the same time, all are together, reaching to the same goal. That is the beauty, and that is called the ideal. Master Mahasaya, usually he tried to practice Jnana Yoga. And he used to constantly discriminate and argue with Sri Ramakrishna. Sri Ramakrishna told him, don't argue, that is not your path. I am telling you, God is there, God can be realized, believe it. And promise to me that you are not wasting your time reading that type of book and arguing. Read devotional books. That is for you. That is called idea. All are not the same. But if we try to copy someone, we unnecessarily waste our energy. This is my path and I'm going to follow it and by that way I'm going to reach over there. Ultimately God realization, that is the goal. Whether he is coming through this way or he, he is going in that way, that doesn't matter at all. So that is the main thing. I saw, you know, that nowadays people always send different type of messages, good messages. Someone sent me and in the WhatsApp, there's a new app there, someone sent me. The life is a wonderful exam. But some people try to copy others, forgetting that each has given a different question paper. So if you, the question paper is so completely different. If you are copying the other one, you will completely fail. This is my path and this way I will go. Ram Prashad, he was a great singer. And his complete, all his devotion came out through the songs only. And he never, that way, we never get the description in his biography that he used to meditate for 12 hours and he used to do this, never. Constantly, he's composing and singing and he's crying, he's praying, he's fighting with his mother. And that way he is realizing, so that is called ideal. Each and every one, according to his nature, according to his temperament, according to his understanding, he is getting his own idea. Be satisfied into that and proceed to that and reach, reach, you will reach to that goal. That is the thing. Sri Ramakrishna told that what I told you is indeed your idea. Swami Vivekananda came. He was a Jnana Margi. Constantly, he 
is discriminating, his mind was very sharp. Master Mahasaya, by age he was little aged, uh, senior than the Vivekananda, Narendra Nath. Uh, he also followed, tried to follow. And Sri Ramakrishna told, no, when someone, the many people, they, they were fasting for Upavarsha, Narendra told, no, I am hungry, I am going to eat. Why should I fast? Master Mahasaya also trying to do that. Immediately Sri Ramakrishna said, that is not your path. You should follow this. Every Ekadashi, that is a special location, you must fast. That's for him. And for Narendra, don't try to copy him. He is totally different type. The people used to bring food. Sri Ramakrishna could understand why they are bringing with all their prayers. And in the Ramanuja, in the Vishishta Advaita, he is telling that is a very, very special thing. The food. What food you are eating and from whose hand? That's why, you know, misunderstanding in our uh, society. But Sri Ramakrishna could understand and say, don't eat this food. But keep it for Naren. Nothing is going to happen to him. Because of the, his body consciousness was not there. The first day when he came to Sri Ramakrishna, Sri Ramakrishna saw him and then soliloquized. He said, can there be such a personality with high sattva guna in Calcutta? A city like Calcutta? So like this, sattva guna, his mind is always on the top level, never connected with the body. So obviously, whatever food he is eating and things that he is doing, not connected with the ego, let him do it. It's very difficult to understand. Master Moshe and all others, they used to think Sri Ramakrishna is favoring him. It's not the question of favor, the question of idea. You must practice in this way, you must go in this way. When we joined first in the Ramakrishna mission, so many brahmacharis. Uh, you can see me, the, my, I was also very strong body. And another brahmachari came, my friend, almost the same age group. He was very lean and thin and he was a very, very devoted. He used to go and lie down before the mother's temple in Belurmat and he'll be praying for half an hour, one hour, in the same posture he'll be lying down and praying and praying and praying and praying. And when he used to get up, we could feel that he has cried so much through with his prayer. I once or twice, I liked that, I tried to, but it was impossible after five minutes, ten minutes, who can lie down like that? It's so difficult. One of our Swamiji noticed it. And just to make him, uh, he used to ask me, hey, go and give him a shake, like you. He should follow your path. But I told, no, Swami, he's a di totally different way. Mine is different. So I used to go and hold him. But at the same time, I knew his path is totally different. Still now, after 40 years, same way he is practicing. He is going, he never cares for the lecture or writing articles or going to talk to people, nothing. He chose a little, in the Ramakrishna mission, you must have to do some work. And usually when you are taking food that given by the devotees, you have to give them back something. So he is, some whatever responsibility, so little responsibility he is practicing, following. His, uh, his background is science. So naturally he was given to look after some, that type of work. He is carefully doing morning and evening and other time, going on praying. That is the way. You cannot follow him. You cannot imitate him. You may be inspired, but it is very difficult. So it is better to follow your own nature and to develop. But one thing is very common. That is your ideal, your ideology. God is our goal. And to reach to God, if I feel that by singing, my mind is becoming calm and composed and my mind is becoming free from the ego, that is your path. By working, by meditating, 
by discriminating, by prayer. That should be, stress should be given. So Sri Ramakrishna is telling spiritual ideal. What is that spiritual ideal? Particular thing, good for you. That is called spiritual ideal. And that we have to understand. And sometimes Guru understands that and tell this is your ideal. Follow it. Have complete faith on Guru. And go on. The Guru, when he is telling you this, is not he. It is coming from the God. The moment he says like that, apparently, oh, this man is telling like this again. No, not like that. It's coming from the God. And when he says, it's coming from that particular tap, but the water comes from the main source. It's the God. That is the water. is flowing through that tap, reaching to you through that particular tap. And that tap we consider as guru. But this is the ideal. Whatever the ideal, that is what Sri Ramakrishna said. And then he said, one can certainly see God through the practice of spiritual discipline. This is a unique statement. One can certainly see God, whether the Brahmin or Kshatriya or Vaishya, or this country or that country, nothing, 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 anyone. By practicing spiritual discipline, and that is the question, what is the spiritual discipline? And he says, the vision of God is the only goal of human life. Ishwar love, manushya, jivanir, uddeshya. Again and again, he used to say, Ishwar love. The spiritually, you have to go and God realization, the vision of God. That is the ultimate of human life. How? Spiritual practice. What is the spiritual practice? He said in many different places, two, three things. Sadhu Sangha. Then what? Nirjan Var. Third? Solitude, the Nijan Vash. Then what? Discrimination. And then finally, prayer. First is hearing. Sravan, Manan, Nididhyasana. Sravana, you have to hear, hear, hear. You have to go and listen. Or you have to read books. And after reading books, the problem is the young minds, when they are reading books, they understand things in a totally different way. So that is not completely clarified. Information is there. And there'll be some people who are very intelligent, they can quote from different scriptures, but that is also not the thing. Understanding. So sadhu sangha. Which the more sadhu again? One who has already realized God or whose mind is completely free from karma and krodha, free from vasanas, there is a holy man. How you will understand that? Again, Sri Ramakrishna is telling that he will not have any desire. When the worldly desires have gone completely, he is a holy man. Now, whatever he says, that you have to listen first. Second, you have to apply according to your own capacity. Then some people, like Raman Maharshi, is a very high Advaitic type of realizations. Without the primary preparation, if you try to follow him, what will happen? So that's where your ideal. Your ideal means you have to understand what is good for me, or suppose you have a guru, whatever he says, that is your idea. And don't look he, this and that. Continue. And go for praying for others. Appreciate others. Whoever is going on that way, do it. So that is called, so but by practicing the spiritual discipline. And to practice this, only to go and listen to the spiritual talks that also need discipline. 
today I go, oh nice, that man has come over there, beautifully he is giving the law lecture, I go over there and listen, then because another person, hundreds of people are there, twenty dollar ticket, so I go and listen, <laughs> that way, that won't do, it's a regular basis you have to go, the srabana, that is called not only study, but the srabana literally hearing, they are only hearing not that, you have to understand it. So, sravana, then manana, constantly going on, brooding on that particular. Is it applicable to me? Can I follow that? It's a beautiful ideal, very high ideal, wonderful thing. But is it possible for me to follow? If not, well, let me once again go back. So, let me listen. There must be a path for me. So they go back, they go back, they go back, and then they find, oh, this is the path. That is according to my temperament. But some of the disciplines you have to follow, like getting up in the early morning, that is the traditional way it goes. And then you have to practice meditation in the early morning, half an hour before the sunrise, they say. So accordingly, you are getting up and you are washing and then meditating and praying and then reading the books and again you are doing little other work and trying to avoid the worldly people, those who are constantly talking about the thing that is which is too much worldly. So if I sell this land, I am going to get this profit, I do this and I get to get that type of all worldly things as possible, maximum possible. Ever. Then people are criticizing, people are all the time hankering for name and fame. Avoid those companies as maximum as possible. And then control your mind, withdraw your mind and go on constantly praying. And different type of advices, many different people they have given. Our Brahmananda ji, the direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna, he said keep a photo of Thakur always with you. Take it out, see, immediately you are reminded and go on repeating his name, praying to him. Whatever good thing that you are going to eat before that, mentally offer it to God. Anything good that you see or hear, mentally offer it to God. And by that way, what is happening? Constantly remembering God, the constant presence of God. Practice in the presence of God. So practice, practice, practice constantly, that, that is called spiritual practice. Spirit is subtle and then the gross is the body. So naturally spiritual practice is that and I am not going to harm anyone, rather I am going to help everyone. So that is called spiritual. Friends, we will conclude today by reading again, once again, one can certainly see God through the practice of spiritual discipline. In the next class, we may touch at this point, what are the spiritual disciplines, what are the different types. As because it is a Hinduism, you can understand, those who are practicing the path of jnana, they have different type of discipline. Those who are practicing yoga or bhakti or the karma, different type of discipline but some common and some special. So these are the spiritual disciplines where the only thing is very common. I am going to realize God and only by practicing these I am sure that I am going to realize God and in this very life. And what is that? In the Vedanta they say, Bhuteshu Bhuteshu Vichitra Dheeraha Pritya asman lokan amrita bhavanti. And seeing that God, that consciousness, that Brahman, that self in every being manifested in different names and form, I am in rest, I am in peace, I am in bliss. That is the goal. The vision of God is the only goal of human life, only goal. Thank you very much. Please repeat after me. Niranjanam nityam 
अनंतरूपम भक्तानुकंपा धृत विग्रह भई ईशावतारम परमेशमिड्यम तम राम कृष्णम शिरसा नमः ओम शांति 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 ही हरि ही ओम तत्सत श्री राम कृष्ण अर्पण मस्तू